I've scaled cleaning businesses to millions of dollars and over the years I've learned a lot through the journey. I've made a lot of good decisions and also a lot of mistakes. So I wanted to compile all that information into one book, one resource that people can go to to learn how to scale a business, a cleaning business remotely to millions of dollars. And that's right here what I have for you, the million dollar blueprint. It took me hours, hundreds of hours to write this book that's over 100 pages long and initially I was going to sell this, you know, run ads to it and all that stuff, but I've decided that I want to give it away for free because you should have this information at your fingertips at all times if you're the type of person who wants to scale a remote cleaning business to millions of dollars. So in this video, I want to share with you the million dollar blueprint. The first chapter is really explaining what are the three levels of a cleaning business because that's important to know going into the rest of the chapters and understanding what your true problem is and what you need to solve in order to get to the next level. So the first level of business is you as a cleaning business is doing less than $20,000 a month. You probably have less than 20 recurring clients and you probably only have one to three cleaners. You might have an admin person, but chances are you're doing everything yourself and you're wearing all the hats in the business. Now this can be stressful and it makes it really difficult to get to the next level because your profit can be anywhere from $3,000 a month to even losing money. And that is not a sustainable way to run your business. So at this point, I've seen people get you know, lost in the sauce. They wanna do a bunch of fancy things with their business. But the true problem, the true crippling problem to get to the next level, to get past the 20K per month is really just a lack of leads. Because if you had more leads, you could have more customers, turn them into more recurring customers, and then have more money. And it sounds really simple when I put it that way, but it can be difficult to get leads. Even though there's you know, millions of houses and businesses to clean, this is probably one of the most common problems I see. So that's why in chapter two, I'm gonna share the lead generation machine that's literally helped us get thousands and thousands of leads to help us run and scale our cleaning businesses. All right, now level two in the business is if you're doing anywhere from 20 to $50,000 a month. And if this is you, seriously pat yourself on the back because this is a tough place to get to. But at this point, you have you know, probably around three to 10 full-time cleaners. You're probably having some kind of admin or salesperson that's in the office, whether that's remote or like in a physical office. And you know, sometimes I see that as somebody's like husband or wife, but somebody's helping them run the day-to-day -day of the business. Because at this point, it's pretty difficult to do everything yourself if you're doing 20 to $50,000 a month. And lastly, your profit can be anywhere from as high as $10,000 a month to as low as losing money. Yes, I know that sounds crazy to be doing something like 30K a month and losing money, but I've seen it before. And at this point, you have a few different crippling problems that could be stopping you from either making good profit or you know, growing and scaling your business. Now it's probably one of these things or a blend of these things. Number one, you don't have consistent lead flow. Number two, you're unable to convert one-time customers to recurring customers because at the end of the day with a house cleaning business, your job is to get recurring customers. That is what makes these businesses so great. So if you can't do that, you're constantly having to pay for new customers to come in the door and you're not making as much money on them. And the last thing, which kind of ties in with your inability to convert to recurring, is a lack of good cleaners. This is probably one of the other biggest hurdles I see in cleaning businesses is it's hard to find good cleaners. They seem like a dime a dozen. And when you have that roadblock, it can be extremely difficult for you to scale because how can you actually fulfill on good cleans if you don't have good cleaners? So if that's you, there will be a section in the book that is gonna address all these problems. Now, level three is you're doing 50 to $100,000 per month. And if this is you, that is amazing. Pat yourself on the back. But you're probably on this video because you wanna keep growing and scaling. So at this point, there's gonna be problems. There's always problems in business and it's just about you know overcoming that hurdle and getting to the next step. At this point, you probably have around 100 recurring clients you know, you're doing somewhere between 50 and 100K, you definitely have to have someone that's running the day-to-day, -day, like an operations admin type person. And if you're creeping up past, you know, like around 100K a month, you probably have a manager or you need to implement one. And you have somewhere between seven and 15 cleaners, which is 
a lot of freaking cleaners. And your profit can be anywhere from, you know, as high as 20, 30K a month to as low as still losing money. I know that sounds crazy, but it's possible. So at this point, what is a crippling problem that's stopping you from scaling? One, you have low customer lifetime value. So what that means is you don't have a lot of customers that are paying you over and over again on a recurring basis, or maybe you do, but they stop paying you after a couple of months. You want to maximize how much your customers are paying you via recurring services, ancillary services, or you know just charging them more because maybe your prices are too low. The second thing is really it's about your team because once you get to a certain level, you can do everything yourself. So then it becomes, how can I hire the right people that are gonna manage the business the way that it should be so that it can keep growing? And that's from salespeople to admin people the cleaners, the managers, it's finding the right people. It's the who. And that's how you're gonna get to the next level in the cleaning business. So those are the three levels. And now that you understand what your crippling problem is, you can go to the chapter in the book that makes sense for you. Because before you can skip ahead and get to like the crazy chapters at the end where it's talking about you know building a sellable business and how to grow through acquisition by buying other cleaning businesses, you can't do that without understanding the other problems that need to be fixed in the business. All right, the first section I wanna talk about is lead generation methods because this is probably where I see most of the people that are watching this video right now struggling. There's three different buckets you can fall in when you have this problem. One, you probably only get referrals because you're not running any paid advertising and that's how you run your business, off of word of mouth. And if this is you, that's actually fantastic because a lot of companies actually struggle with this and that really stems from having like a great service so if you have a great service and you run off of word of mouth then you're in a good spot but we need to figure out how to get a more predictable lead channel in your business because i'm sure you felt it before some weeks you get customers some weeks you don't and that's because you're solely relying on your customers telling other people about you so we're going to talk about other lead channels that you can be adding to your business. The second bucket is you do run paid advertising, but it's not profitable. It may look like you're making a lot of money. Let's, for example, let's say you're running Google local service ads and you put $2,000 in and you get $3,000 back. Maybe it looks like, oh, I made $3,000, but after you pay the, you know, the cost of the ads and you pay the cleaners and you do all that stuff, you're actually not that profitable. So it's about figuring out how do we make this lead channel profitable? And if we can't, how do we find other lead channels that are going to help your business be profitable? And the last bucket is you have a really good lead source, a lead channel, but you're hitting a cap on it and like the channel just won't give you more leads. No matter you know what you do, you hit that ceiling. Now it's about, okay, how do we keep doing that, but then add something on top of it so we can continue to get more leads and scale the business. So there's four main lead generation methods that I go over in the book, and I can't go over each one in detail because this video would just be way too long, but the main ones are one, bottom of funnel advertising. This is anything like Google local service ads, Yelp, you know, just Google, paid ads, like anything where someone is already looking for cleaning and you're putting your brand there, then that's bottom of funnel. Then we have top of funnel, which is gonna be something like Facebook ads because people scrolling the timeline aren't necessarily looking for cleaning, but you can still get customers by running ads on Facebook. And this one's gonna be a little more advanced, a little more difficult, but still possible. We've done it before. The third one is gonna be through brand building and reputation building. So this can be something like building your reputation within a certain group, a certain community, and just getting as many five-star reviews on the internet as possible so that when people see your company, they see that I can trust them and it just gives you more visibility to other people. The last one's gonna be cold outreach. So this can be done through cold email, cold calling, you know, just any kind of cold outreach on like social media. And by doing this, you're basically creating customers out of thin air because maybe they weren't looking for house cleaning, but when you hit them up, they needed it. So that's how you can, you know, create more customers, create more leads by just simply reaching out to people. It's kind of up to you to figure out which one is gonna be the best one for you, right? If you have more time than money, well then you're probably gonna to have to do something closer to like cold outreach because it doesn't really cost you anything except for your time. But if you have 
a little bit more money to spend on ads, then you can look into the paid advertising. And the first one I would do if, you, if you're not running any paid ads is bottom of funnel because this is the easiest one to do, right? If someone's already looking for house cleaning, it's gonna be very easy to convince them to use you because they're, they're looking for a solution that you have. It's just a matter of can they trust you to do it? And that's gonna be the easiest way to get leads. Now when it comes to the cold outreach, that can be pretty difficult, like if you don't know anything about what you're doing. But lucky for you, I put all the scripts and all the templates in the actual book. So make sure to stay to the end so that you can get you know, your free copy of the book and have all the resources at your fingertips to run the cold outreach. Okay, in section three, we're gonna be talking about hiring and cleaning your retention because we talked about it. This can be one of the most difficult parts in a cleaning business, right? You're dealing with lower level labor and this is always gonna be a difficult problem. And probably no matter what level you're at, if you're level one, two, or three cleaning business, you're still going to have some form of this problem. So you're, you're gonna fall into one of these three buckets, right? Either you have zero cleaners or contractors right now, you're doing all the work yourself. And this is not a good place to be in because you can't scale like this. If you're doing the cleanings yourself, you can only do so many cleanings in a week before it's you're like you're burnt out or you physically cannot do it anymore. So you shouldn't want to get out of the field only to scale, but you should want to do that so that you don't have to be out there busting your freaking back to get these jobs done. The second bucket I see people fall into is they have subpar employees. So they have employees, but they're constantly having to fix their work, having to check on them, having to put out customer fires because the cleaner didn't do a good job. And if you're in this bucket, there is solutions, but you have to be open to looking at the writing on the wall and seeing why are these people not you know, performing the way you want them to and how do we fix problems. And the last bucket I see people in is they run this whole business remotely, they have contractors, but they can't find good contractors because everyone they find, they just don't have great expectations set, they, the cleaners are just showing up and not doing the best job, or they're taking their customers, whatever the, the problem is, they just can't get it right. And if you fall in this bucket, we're gonna cover exactly how to fix it in this chapter. Now in the book, I tell my story about how me and Johnny started orange window cleaning back in the day. We were the ones doing the, the work ourselves. We were literally out there cleaning the windows and then eventually we realized we can't do all the window cleaning ourselves. So then we hired our friends. We started hiring people to be employees in the window cleaning business. And I go through the whole story of like our journey and us evolving as business owners to understanding that okay, now we have employees, this is how you hire people, this is how you train people. But then at some point, we made a change, a pretty big pivot actually, where we realized we didn't need employees because we could hire contractors that already know how to do the jobs and they have all the equipment. So then it was easier for us to scale because one of our biggest problems was always cash flow. You know, we started the business with literally $150, which is pretty insane. And after that, Everything that went into the business from buying equipment to buying new trucks to putting into the marketing, we always had to pull money out of the business, you know, and invest it back in. So this wasn't as sustainable, but when we learned how to do it with contractors, it really changed the game for us because that meant we could do more jobs and not necessarily have to take on the burden of, you know, buying a full new truck with all the equipment and hiring new employees. So if you're someone that runs an employee-based business right now, that is something to consider, you know, is it possible? 100%, we did it. Is it hard? Yeah, there's, there's gonna be some challenges in Roblox, but you know, that's business. Now let's get into like, how do we actually find cleaners? How do we find independent contractors that are gonna do the jobs for us, right? I'll start with the free ways because everybody loves free, right? One, Facebook groups and next door groups. So this is anything that is local. A next door group is people that are within a certain community and you can find these types of groups on Facebook too. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go on these groups and just post from your personal account, hey, does anybody know any good cleaners? Or does someone have a good cleaner they could recommend? And you're gonna get a lot of people recommend their cleaners, cleaners they know. And from this list, I mean, you might get five people. I've seen people get as many as like 20 recommendations. You're gonna call all these cleaners and this is your first list of cleaners that are potential providers for your business. Now the other free way is basically the same thing, but 
from current cleaners or people you know. You can find pretty good cleaners this way because referrals are gonna be someone you know, saying, hey, this cleaner is good. So that's a great place to start. Now moving on to some cheap ways to do it. You're gonna have to put a little bit of money in here, but if you find any directories like housekeeper.com or Craigslist or anything like that where you can post a job and have cleaners apply to your posting or just directly reach out to them, that's gonna be a great way to find cleaners. Now, the reason why this one is you know, hit or miss is because these cleaners weren't necessarily looking for your business, right? Some of them are gonna say, I already have enough work. Some of them are gonna say, you can't pay me enough. Whatever the reason is, you might get people that don't wanna work with you. And that's why I use the rule of 25 because I've seen that on average, when people start a business or they're looking for their first independent contractors to hire as cleaners, they need to talk to at least 25 people before they you know, find that really good one. That's on average, Some, sometimes it's five, sometimes it's 35, but that's a good place to start in terms of your, your mental and just understanding the mindset going into it. The last way and the most efficient way is gonna be a job posting like Indeed. Now you're gonna have to put some money behind this, but that's not the worst thing in the world because at the end of the day, how much is a good cleaner gonna make you? If they can you know, do hundreds of jobs and then get referrals from those jobs, get recurring clients from those jobs. A good cleaner makes you a ton of money. So if you have the money, don't be scared to invest $100, $200, $300 into something like Indeed, where you can get people applying to your job, where you know they wanna work for you because they applied, and you can find some good cleaners this way. Now, caveat, if you've never done Indeed, there's a ton of crap on Indeed. If you get 100 applicants, maybe you have five good people and that's just how indeed works because it makes it so easy to apply to your job posting but uh, just go into it knowing that and you can find some great people on indeed now it's one thing to find good cleaners but what about vetting the cleaners because this is really what it comes down to the skill of you know talking to someone and understanding are they going to be a good fit for your company and setting the right expectations is everything that's what separates an okay business owner and a great business owner that's making a lot more profit. So in the book, I actually have what to look for in a good, reliable cleaner. Things like at least one to two years of cleaning experience, right? That sounds straightforward, but some people don't look for that. You know, someone that's proactive, that has good communication, someone that can give you feedback on the jobs. Uh, they're responsive, motivated to work. These are things we're looking for, but there's also things that we're not looking for, right? Those red flags. How do you make sure someone is not gonna work for you if they demonstrate some of these red flags. And it's things like, it's constantly making excuses or blaming other people, um, tardiness, having to like chase them down like because they're just not communicating back with you. Um, you know, they have bad attitudes about the jobs or about the people. Um, just all these negative things that you don't want in a cleaner. So, like I said, have the whole call framework, the script of like, you know, how to do this interview, how to vet them, and highly recommend you check this out because like I said, this is one of the hardest things to do in business. And if you can get this down, you can find good cleaners and be able to scale your business and make more money. So the last thing is gonna be onboarding. The onboarding process is crucial because that is when you set expectations with your cleaner and you wanna make sure that expectations are crystal clear. This is something that in the beginning, I made a ton of mistakes around because I wasn't having those conversations with cleaners, right? Like, what do I expect out of you when you go to the job, when you're at the job, after the job? There's a saying that says, unclear expectations are always unmet. And you know, it's the truth. If they didn't know what you expected out of them, how can they per perform at those expectations? Some people, you know, want them to just already know, but why, why go through that? Why burn a good cleaner? Because you didn't set those good expectations up front. So I have the whole onboarding process, checklist and everything down to the T on how to onboard properly so that you can have a good cleaner and have them stay on your team for longer. All right, so just to give you a recap of what the rest of the book will look like, chapter four has how to increase customer lifetime values, how to make the most out of all the customers that come into your business. 
Section five is gonna be building your team, right? Hiring an admin, hiring salespeople, when to do that in the business, when you're scaling up to like millions of dollars. So that's section five. Section six is gonna be talking about how to grow through acquisition. How do you buy other cleaning companies and stack that on top of yours to be making more money and build a business that's bigger? And we've done this before, and I have the whole story and I've had, I have other case studies of people that we've helped where they actually purchase cleaning businesses to grow their business. And the last section is how to build a sellable asset because people don't really know that you can sell a cleaning business. And we've done it before and I, I tell you exactly how to do it in the book. If you can build a cleaning business that can sell for tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars or even seven figures plus, then that is, ultimately the dream of having a business, right? But if you want to have access to this book completely for free, I'm gonna have the link down below so that you can go to the page, you can download it, and you can read it for yourself. And again, like I said, guys, this wasn't supposed to be free, but we made it free so that you have the resources and have no excuses for why you can have a million dollar business. So if you have any questions about the book, about cleaning businesses, about working with us, because we do have the biggest cleaning consulting company put it down in the comments uh you could always reach out to me at sergio Seleski, that's my personal handle or johnny and sergio or if you want to reach out to johnny that's johnny robinson so um see you guys in the next one peace <laughs>